Before we get started, be sure to hit the subscribe button down below. You'll get updates as we release these videos and you'll get access to great content with Tableau, Power BI, Alteryx, and data literacy. That said, in this video, we're going to create a radians-based bar chart. So the distance, the length of the bars will be based on the percent of a circle and not the actual length of the bars. It's two different chart types, and this will be a two-part series. The first, just doing radians here in this video. So let's hop in and take a look at this chart. So what we have is a radian-based bar chart. What I mean by that is if we look at phones, it's the largest value for sales. It's 330,000. And then fasteners is the smallest percent of that next total. And this is radians based. If we actually compared the lengths of these two bars side by side of phones and chairs, right now the chairs bar, that total length of the bar is not equally represented in terms of length. It's actually should be looking longer than what it is. So this phone's bar is actually too long, even though it's appropriately sized in the sense that it looks longer in terms of radians, the number of degrees than the chairs here, which is 328,000 plus. So how do you create this chart? Well, we're going to use data densification to create this chart type. And I'm just going to create a new sheet here. And I'm going to show you how I've set this data up. Right click, I'm going to edit my data source. For you, you're going to connect to your data source. We're going to use Sample Superstore here, and we're going to look at the total sales for subcategory. We have 17 subcategories. I've got my data, I've connected to orders, and then I've done a join, I've completed a join here. And this join is to a separate data source that has one column in it. I created this myself, made a CSV out of it. It counts from zero all the way to 200, a single column. And then what I do to that, if I just hover over this line to show the cardinality, it's a many to many join where I've made a calculated join of the number one on orders and I've connected it to this placeholder data with another calculated join of one. So one equals one means we're gonna have a full many to many join if we used a standard join before, this would essentially create 201 copies from zero to 200, that's 201 numbers, copies of the Superstore data set. With Tableau and its new relationships, it just creates two separate connections here. And when we join those together, Tableau will sort of densify our data when necessary. So we have this data source that we've connected to. Now let's actually create our visualization that we're looking to come away with. First, just again, as a point of reference, what are we using? We're going to use subcategory and we're going to use sales. So I'm just going to use subcategory and sales and show you what that looks like. Again, you've probably worked with this. If you've watched these videos in the past, we've had these values show up, but here they are. And you can see phones just slightly larger than chairs being our largest value and fasteners being much, much smaller. What we want to start here is creating a percent of total calculation. So I'm just going to do this with a fixed level of detail. I'm just going to create a fixed and I'm going to say fixed on subcategory. Give me the sum of sales. And then I'm going to divide that fixed statement by another level of detail. And this is going to be a nested level of detail calculation. I'm going to say max and then I'm going to copy this numerator, this fixed subcategory, paste it inside the max and then close this out. This will return this top value for phones. All the other values will be the individual subcategories. So this is gonna give us values between zero and one, one being this maximum of $330,007. We'll just call this percent of sales. I, I can hit okay on this. I already have this calculation created. I've done it a few times. I'm just gonna pretend, let's hit okay and close this out. That's the easy calculation. Now let's just review over on the left here, our placeholders. What we need to do is get a placeholder calculation that calculates the percent of the max of our value. I'll just create a new sheet. Remember value, if I put it out of my sheet here, counts up from zero to 200. I wanna make these values go between zero and one, just like my normalized percent of sales. So I'm just gonna create a new calculated field Values already at the row level. I can just divide this by the max of value. And this is just going to be percent of value. 
whatever that value is, it's going to return it. So I'm gonna hit okay. Let's just bring this out on our view so you can see what it looks like. We're gonna have a straight line ultimately, but you can see it counts up from zero to one. Now I can just pull off value here. And if I put subcategory on my view, this is where you'll see it, the data now densify. So here it is, boom, our data has densified. We now have 17 different copies of this data source that goes from zero to one, it's normalized. So this is really great. We're going to basically turn each of these points that we see here, each of these ticks now circles into indicators of whether they are less than or equal to that percent of total for the sum of sales. The way we're gonna do this, we're gonna create a new calculated field. We're just gonna say if our percent value is less than or equal to our percent of sales, then we just wanna return that same percent value. End. Now when I do this, and I can just call this our um, active bars, I'll hit okay. If I take active bars here, and I place this on the view to the side, what we'll see after I change this to a dimension is we'll see it looks like it's a actual bar chart relative to our values that we would have expected to see. We can use this calculation along with some geometry to create that rounded bar chart. But that challenge will be that we can't have subcategory out on rows. We need to have it on detail here. To make sure that we have the equally spaced distances, we're gonna create one last calculation that's essentially our radius, the distance out. And we'll just create a new calculated field. And we're just gonna say index. We're gonna add a couple values in there. I'm just gonna say plus four. That'll give a little space, like a donut in the chart. I'm just gonna call this index. I'm gonna hit okay. And now we can start building out this view. So we've got our percent of value, we've got our percent of total. It's just a matter of creating our, basically three calculations that are gonna create this circle. We're gonna start, by the way, if we go back to this distances, we're gonna create this background groove first, and then we'll add the bars over the top. So how do we do the background groove? For the background groove, we're gonna use percent of value. I'm gonna create a new calculation, and what we're gonna first start with is our columns. We're gonna have one columns calculation and two rows calculations. And the one will create, the first rows calculation will give us our grooves. And the second calculation will give us the rounded bars over the top. But if we're doing this right, we'll start with columns. So let's create a calculation called columns. From there, we're just going to say negative because otherwise the radian start just will be on the other side of the circle we're just gonna say 1.5 times our index. And this will give us a little bit more space in between each of those bars, but from there we can say sum of sine of pi times, and I'm gonna do 1.25, that's gonna give us five eighths of a circle times the percent of value here. And I'm just gonna, uh, you know what? We're gonna try something on the fly here. I'm going to change sine to cosine. So now we've got negative. This is going to be our radius setting the distance. And then these will track our points across the circle itself. And I'm not sure what's going to happen because I'm, like I said, I'm trying this on the fly, going with a different approach. But now I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to go find column and place that out on my view. And I think it's an aggregation. Yep, it is. But let's go ahead and pull off subcategory. We're gonna put that on the all marks card on detail. Now you'll see our densification has disappeared for the most part. We just need to bring some of that back. And we're gonna do that by clicking on columns here and editing our table calculation. And we're going to select subcategory. Um, you know, we're not gonna select subcategory, but what we are gonna do is we're gonna go find value we're gonna place value out on detail as well. And we're gonna change this from an aggregation to a dimension. Now, if we edit this calculation, um, we'll be very close. 
But first, let's bring in our rows value. I'm just going to skip ahead. Let's go and bring and create this rows calculation. Let's call this rows one. And once again, we'll just say negative 1.5 times index times the sum of sine pi times 1.25 times percent value. I'm going to hit OK. Let's go find this value. This is going to be our true test as we bring everything together. Bringing this out on our view. Tableau is calculating. Look, we have some radians sort of showing up. You can sort of see that semicircle that we were hoping to create. From here, we just need to edit our table calculation. Instead of um, selecting percent value here, let's also select value. Let's, I'm just going to see what happens here and active bars. Nope, we're going to do the opposite. We're just going to select subcategory. And oh, I had it right the first time. Select subcategory. There it is. It's sort of half working. That's because we haven't finished our columns calculation. So I'm just going to hit OK. Let's go edit the table calculation here and also select subcategory. Look at that. We have what looks like um, a chart that's working, except uh, things are flipped, so I'm just going to edit my rows calculation and get rid of that negative sign. And now if I hit apply, there we go. Now we've got a radial bar chart, or at least what will start looking like it. Let's change our mark types here to lines. And things might look a little messy at first. That's fine. We can just go onto our sheet here and place value on path, and that's going to fix our lines. This is the, the groove background, so we're going to change the grooves to be a lighter color. Let's change the size as well. And now we can actually get rid of percent value and active bars. Now they can sort of see things coming together. While we're at it, we're going to add labels, but our labels are only going to go on the end lines here for the total sales. And the way that we're going to do that is we're just going to go find sales we're going to place that on to label. We're not going to panic. Don't worry about all these extra labels. Click on label, choose end lines, and then choose end line only. And we can also just change the size. I'm going to size this down to like size nine. Now that gives us labels at the end. We're going to put the bars, the, the labels at the start on our other bars. We're going to create a second rows calculation here. To do that, we're going to duplicate rows. So I'm going to right click, duplicate. We're going to build one more quick calculation. And that calculation is just going to be percent value less than or equal to our percent of sales. And we can just call this percent value bar TF, whether it's true or false. We'll use this as a Boolean in our next addition to rows here. So we're just going to edit our duplicated rows calculation. We'll call this rows top. We're going to multiply this by this existing value times an if statement. And our if statement is just going to be if percent value TF, that's true or false, then one end. And it says I can't mix aggregate and non-aggregate. So I'm just going to put a min wrapped around this percent of value TF. I'm going to hit OK. All right, take rows top, click and drag that out to the right of rows. So we've got our two values. Now you'll see we sort of have these bars. They don't make sense. What we need to do is we need to go edit our table calculations for columns, rows, and rows top. So right click on columns, edit the table calculation, and then under the sort order, choose specific dimensions, choose custom, search for sales because that's the value we're using, and make sure it's the sum of sales and we're going to leave it as ascending. We can close that out, duplicate, and do the same process that we just did for rows. So custom, sales, make sure we're choosing sum, and ascending. If you notice, we've now fixed our top chart here. Values are descending top to bottom from outer to inner. And then we can just, again, edit this rows top to do the same thing, choose specific values, select subcategory, custom, search for sales, choose some, 
and let's make sure that is ascending. And what do we end up with? We've basically got our bars showing up here. Our labels, however, are on the end. We don't want them on the end, we want them at the beginning, and we're gonna show subcategory at the beginning. So we can take sales, just place that on detail, take subcategory now, and place that out on label. And on label, uncheck the end line, label of end line, and choose the label of start line. We can also change our alignment. We're gonna make it face upward, place the value back and in the middle. Now that we have everything, oops, I uh, pressed the wrong button there for a second. Now that we have this figured out, we can take these two visuals, right click, create a dual axis, and we can synchronize these axes together. Tableau by default, when we synchronize, brings in measure names and measure values. Let's remove that from our all marks card. It'll get rid of both at the same time. Once we've done that, we can go back to rows top. So back down to this marks card, choose color. Let's choose this blue for the time being, and we can just size it up a little bit. And that's it. Uh, from here, we've created our radian bar chart. They're all equal radian. Again, the outer line of phones is actually much longer than chairs because if you think about a race around a track, it's much longer. So it's actually a lot longer than what you're looking at. But in terms of how we see it visually, the radians are equally proportioned. So the degrees around this part of the circle is equal. And by the way, if you did want to change the overall proportion of this circle size, if you went into columns and rows, let's just actually do this really quick as a customization. If you created a parameter and let's set a range to it between one and two, actually we can do technically zero, between zero and two and we can make a step size of 0 0.05. And we'll just call this size of circle. I'm gonna hit okay. We can change our rows and our columns calculation and replace this 1.25 with this circle calculation, this parameter. So size of circle. I'm just going to copy this because this will be fun. I can put this out on my view. You'll see it's going to break here for a second. Let's edit each of these values. Size of circle, size of circle, and columns as well, edit, and replace 1.25 with size of circle. Now that we've done that, it's going to be a half circle because my default value is 1. But if I look at size of circle, I right click and show that parameter. If I size that all the way out, you'll notice that I make a full circle around. If I size it at like 0.5, this should be just about a quarter of a circle, sure enough. And like I said, my favorite value is 1.25. It's 5 eighths of a circle all the way around to where it was. From here, let's just get rid of the formatting and we can call it good. So right click, format. When you get a dual access, you need to remove column dividers and you need to remove row dividers. So let's do both of those while we're at it. Access rulers, access ticks, grid lines, zero lines. We want to get rid of all of that. And those are always added by default for Tableau. But once they're gone, right click, uncheck show header, right click, uncheck show header. And then we can remove these nulls by right clicking and hiding indicator. And that's it. That's our radian based circular bar chart. Not a favorite. You should stay away. It's perceptively incorrect. And we'll talk about that in the next video. Anyway, we're wrapping up here. If you did enjoy and you did learn how to create a radiant spaced, uh, you know, rounded bar chart here, um, go ahead and like this video. Otherwise, feel free to subscribe so you can catch out all our videos as they come out. Anyway, you've made it through this extra long video explaining how to create this circular bar chart based on radians. We'll catch you in the next one later. Yeah.